When you mention climate change, you think of the young eco-warrior Greta Thunberg. But did you know in 1998, Epson had its own young eco-warrior? Matthew Williams was hailed a hero after appearing on London Tonight, proclaiming a High Court victory over development plans in Surrey. I mean, if we go in Epson, really, you ought to see any green at all in Epson. So it's, it's good to keep this bit here, because, like, you've got the woodlands, and you've got this bit people can walk through and that. Today's High Court victory is a legal first. Never before has someone so young led the cry of the wild, and a wild life it is. Fellow protesters on the eco warpath are his family now. They shift from camp to camp, facing threats from developers all over the country. In Epsom, they're up against the wrath of the local council. We want them to leave that site, they have to leave their site, they have caused damage, they have uh, caused chaos in the area, and there are some very good economic and environmental arguments for the development going ahead. Local residents I spoke to today, however, couldn't fathom what they were. There's 56 blind flats up there for people that are blind and uh, partially sighted. And you walk through this bit of parkland? I walk all through here. It's a nice shortcut to get through to the house because my friend's leaving the houses back there, so it's a good shortcut to get through. When they first came here, we'd been behind them all the way. What better life for an 11-year-old boy, now hailed as the country's youngest eco-warrior? But it comes at a cost. Matthew Williams hasn't been to school for three years. He can't write and has the reading age of a four-year-old. Q. Q. U. R. S. T. U. But his mother thinks he's learning more living with the eco-warriors than he would do in school. He learns a lot by being, being here. He learns by every, every person that's on site, basically, he's got something to teach him. Oh, I just don't like school. Because all the kids used to pick on me. Some teaching comes on site from an Epsom resident who supports the campaign to save the trees. Just because Matthew can't read and write doesn't mean to say he doesn't understand what he's doing. But Mr Veal is a marketing manager, not a qualified teacher. Matthew is meant to have a council-approved home tutor. The family's lifestyle has made that impossible. But following his high-profile appearance yesterday at the High Court, the authorities have decided to act, saying tonight they'll be asking for an assurance that he will go back to school when the new term starts and that he is living in an appropriate home environment. The signs, though, are that the family will stay in the trees. He can't cope in a school, so there's no point in being under pressure of doing what he can't do. So the country's youngest eco-warrior may soon be fighting on two fronts, not only to save the trees, but also to keep himself out of school. On the 4th of January 1999, the bulldozers turned up, with bailiffs and 500 police to support. When they got here, there was just two eco-warriors left. General survival, and the rest had moved to a new site in Crystal Palace. The two that were here, one left peacefully, the other one was arrested for obstruction. After this, work started on building Hope Car Park and the Town Hall Car Park that we have here now. So what happened to Matthew, AKA General Survival? We don't know. We've looked, uh, we've done searches, but we can't find any information. Matthew or anyone that knows Matthew, if you can get in touch with us at Epson Yule TV at WOIMTG.com, we'd love to know where you are, what you're up to nowadays, and if you're still involved with climate change. Thanks a lot for watching.